يكاخاوي يخستيني التكت يوهان واساسيتي يا اوه قدكي يجي سنجت اني يجي اوه اداتي تخوتن واسا اكخ واسا سنجت اني كخيا اكخ تو ديل يا اوه قدكي ستيني خايتي خاين ستيني يك اخا يا اوه كك قوا اق قوا تشكك قوه تشكك قوه وي خن اي خن قويل خن اداسا يوه ينخيك اي اه سهتين كدوه چوخو ات وي قوخ اه وي سيخ وي اجدسخ ات قا شخ وان قنين سقييس اين ودد ليخي اه قا داسا داسا تسو يلين قد آني ايا كخ اكخ تو ديل داسا يتوج خد ساي اخك يوخك اي يوهان ไอ้เจ้าตัวอ๋อว่าซายที่ยีเจเนว่าซายที่คุสเตดาซาดาที่ทันเดทานี่ขัดอ๋อว่าซากะทูซาจูรีดูดีฮะเออขัดซึ่
Yagi <laughs> <laughs> Quas yat a yat a yak. Quas just think it rain a yat a. Has a good apple. No quas says waiter. Jacuta quas. No, yadua. 
Long ago, no, it is long ago, Slingit women, Slingit women robes, they, I don't know. That's yeah. what's okay. 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 A kaka kwashi we hu ye dadene ye at ah what a kwash we had the jiwo kwash the hu is it in there? Out of who Could it be they made them? Who mm. has? Has outlay outlay yachin? Yadaka is a tinge. The who Yadaka? The Yenaka? War? Yea, awa. Yak eh? Yea, we are to us a good key, Aku. Just take her. Just take her. Yea, awa. He did Chinkat Ka Dark on your gee, a jewel. Look, Edgar. If they're if they're wearing robes, and that's the verb, wouldn't wouldn't you say they were robed? They yeah, that could be. Yeah, they were robed. So it's like uh. <clears throat> had a blanket on, put a blanket on it, put a blanket on. Uh, so yes, that is, they were robed, that, that would be totally fine. Okay, so let me try, make sure, because you guys is work for the class. Does everybody understand what you have to do by Monday and by Friday? Ah, uh, no. Okay. By Monday, 
What are you going to do on Monday? Somebody tell me. Tell a story. Yeah. Seven days, everybody tells one story. That's it for the final meeting. And then we could do any questions, answers, anything else we need to do in that hour and a half. But just work on your story. You're going to tell us the story. If you need a piece of paper, that's fine, but I'm encouraging you to be off book as much as you can. If you need to have that piece of paper there in case you're, if you're nervous or you're worried about it, have it there. If you absolutely feel like you need to read it, that's also fine. I'm just encouraging you to be off the book. Uh, so that's, that's thing number one do on Monday. I can't have exceptions because you just got, you have to do it. Okay. And this is your own interpretation of it, your own version of it. This should not be reading someone else's story. It could certainly be influenced by other people. I would really, and that's totally fine if you're reading someone else telling a story and you're going to tell your own version of that. And sometimes when you're doing this, if you haven't done it before, you do just tell sort of a simplified version of it, which is totally fine. If it doesn't have all the big, huge things that are in there, it's totally fine. Uh, and it could be some other type of language act as well, if it's imitating some sort of speech, but it should go along the lines of clinket oratory. That's Monday. Friday. You're going to give me two things. What are those two things on Friday? Elon and um, translation and one of those little stories. Yes. So your Elon translation, which would be some recording in Shingit that you have worked on, and you're going to get 10 minutes is the goal. If you don't hit 10 minutes, just let me know why. Uh, Seven or eight would be great. Five is getting into the, yeah, that's okay. And if there's a whole bunch of stuff that you're just not sure about, that's also fine. Just do what you can. Feel free to send me versions of it that I can look at it. I can get you feedback. Um, uh, if there's a bunch of double question, and there might be some things where we're like, boy, we're gonna have to guess for this one until we run into a speaker and we might be able to ask them. Uh, but I've encountered stuff in Clinkit where I've got fully fluent elders who are amazing, and sometimes there's three or four of us, and we just have no idea what's really being said. We, we can sort of get, get ourselves kind of close. Uh, so just do what you can. And then these little stories, there's a number of these little readers, and I'll, I'll post the link again. I've got quite a few of these little workbooks, these little reading books that they were making and they're only in Tlingit and I don't know if there's probably a bunch of these that have not been translated but pick a short story and if you guys are working on the same ones that's totally that's fine as long as try to work on it on your own uh, and that's just that's an exercise in translation so that the Tlingit's already written for you and that they should be pretty short like don't pick one that's they there's one of these is going to be the woman who married a bear and it's very long and you don't have to do something that's very long. It shouldn't be more than two or three or four pages. And those are due by Friday. Uh, before Friday, and when I say Friday, I'm talking, um, just to be clear, I'm talking about May 3rd. Before May 3rd becomes May 4th. And then all your work is, is done. Uh, I don't know if any of you have left a, a course evaluation, but I'll go. I'll log on tonight and make sure I can extend that deadline uh, because you guys really you should. It helps our program uh, to have people talk about what we're doing and if it's helping, and also to give feedback and see what could we do better. Any questions or anything regarding your work? the story we're telling on Monday, I guess, um, I didn't understand, like, the story was supposed to be completely original or if we could 
memorize another story, like another speaker's story. Yeah, you can memorize another speaker's story. Or you just yeah, without notes. So you wouldn't want yeah, to. so if it's told by somebody else, then you should not be reading it. Yeah. And it's fine if you want to memorize it. If it's something that you've sort of made into your own version, then you can go ahead and have some notes. And if it's something that you've just totally created on your own, then you can you can read it. Anybody else? Everybody okay? Um, yeah, I got a question. Now I'm really confused. Um, I know we have to submit an Elon translation, and that is due when? May 3rd. Okay, and now um, we also have to submit a translation of a story such as Woman Who Married a Bear that we picked a long time ago, right? Not that one, like a little one like from, these, from this book uh, or something similar, like Plinkett short stories. Like these are very short. And I, I think I can't, I think I mentioned this like months ago, but then kind of forgot to keep reminding you guys. Is that right? I think I did bring it up. Um, I, th I think uh, you just said a mouthful right there, Lance. Mm -hmm. um, I Yeah, I've always gotten confused on what's going to happen next because it seems like you change the order sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah, so for the final uh, Monday, you, you're going to tell a story. And then by Friday of next week, you'll have those two things. Uh, as much of your translation work as you can, as you can get. And if it seems like it's too much, just, just let me know. Okay. Uh, good night, mm -hmm. and, and just do what you can. I mean, you guys are awesome. Everybody has done everything that you need to do. Uh, these are just more like, I'm trying to challenge us as a group and not trying to set this thing saying, if you don't do this, you're not going to do well. So I don't want you to feel pressure like, your uh, everything that when, whenever we do this kind of stuff, it's always just everybody who shows up and does their best does just fine. Uh, I don't like to associate learning a language with an actual sort of letter grade. I just I don't think that's a good approach. Uh, I think the letter grade is more like um, if you were totally checked out, then you don't you don't do well. But everybody who's sticking with it at this point is awesome, right? So we're doing huge things with huge pieces of Klingit oratory. And some of the stuff that I'm asking you to do, the reality is there's probably fewer than 10 people in the world right now who can do that kind of stuff. And so I don't want to put any pressure on anybody, but these are just challenges for ourselves as a language community. We need more people that can tell stories in the language. We need more people that can translate. And then, um, when we got to this, these little short stories, and I forgot to keep reminding you guys about this, uh, I just thought it would be really neat and a neat exercise since the Clinkett's already written for you. Uh, and sometimes you might have to update it. We write things just a little bit different than they did then, like, and maybe that stays long. But I think it would be short because it should only be the Irealis right there. Okay, any other questions? I have a question. Ah. Um, so for my story, I'm just telling like a story, a funny story from my own life. I hope that's okay. Yeah. And, oh, okay, good. And then also, could you explain again, please, how to send the Elon file? I know it's an EAF, and I'm wondering if it's just like an ordinary email with that attachment like from the desktop. Yep, so wherever you're storing those things, just that EAF file is the only thing that I need. The only exception would be if you were working on something that I don't have the original audio and video files for. But that EAF file is just very tiny, so yeah, you send an email, when you go to attach it, you go to wherever you're storing that, and you send it to me. Ah. Oh. Sorry if I've con created confusion.
Any other questions? And, and then if, well, let's just start there. Any other questions on your final assignments? Everybody's just fine. Nobody try not to freak out. I think that, I mean, that's, well, this is like something that's been going on in my head. And like, I'm doing this, I say I'm translating something, but that's like, I know there's so much that's not going to be right from what I'm doing. Right. And I guess it's just good to know that that's, that's okay. Yeah, because this is just a class. Yeah, so. so it's not like I'm going to take that and publish it in the sixth volume of Klinka Oral Literature. It's really an exercise. Then I'm going to give you feedback on the translation. And it's, it's also, there's a bit of a reality check to some of this stuff too. And the reality check for us at this level is sometimes, not all the time, every now and then I think we have to look around and say, we're kind of in big trouble because there's not a lot of people who can do this stuff anymore. And then we got to challenge ourselves to try and do that stuff and then see. Because the biggest thing for me is to think about What's going to help you to continue on the journey? And I think seeing how you guys interpret this stuff, both in terms of listening, writing it, interpreting it, looking at it, interpreting it, and then telling it, that's going to show me a lot as far as where you're at. And I think nobody is expected to, be, to just be a master storyteller by now. Nobody is expected to be able to translate. Uh, you know, if you only get three minutes, then you only get three minutes. If it's full of... of all kinds of errors, that's totally fine. Uh, the thing is that you just you sat down and you took a crack at it. Because it's, it's hard work and, and it's, but it's also something that gives you yet another avenue to continue studying Shingit. There's lots of recorded stuff out there. Everybody could be working on the translation of this stuff because what you're going to find is it's going to show you all these new things that you're like, the more you do this stuff, you're like, hey, I keep noticing they're using this word. I want to know how this word works. And then also there may be some things where we're talking about it, like the word kle and chutle. The more you study oratory, it just it starts to make sense in a way that I think is sometimes hard to explain through English because it's, it's all about time and sort of the order of things, which and think it can sometimes get really fluid. Like if you work with, you really get into the works of like Puchain, Frank Italio. And sometimes it's really hard to tell when things are happening and who's doing what. And so, but I think the more you do that kind of work that does push you into uh, understanding how these speakers were laying things out in terms of when, especially if, you know, Storytelling is a little bit different than conversational stuff because conversation you're going, but with the storytelling, it's like, oh yeah, I had to remember to hit these things and to have these certain sayings. And, and there's a bunch of stuff we didn't even touch on yet, like atku uh, KD and, um, and things like that, like these parables and these phrases that come out of some of these stories. Uh, but that's, you know, there's always more. But yeah, I'm trying to create a real low pressure environment, but where you'll still push yourself, but you won't feel like you're going to be judged, right? Everybody okay? Anything, any other questions? So, with our last uh, two classes here, what do you guys want to work on? What's going to help? I just have like thought, and then it's not, you know, just for like future or clinket language learning. Um, just thinking about like my experience being in classes here, like I've had to like build up my my resources and um, certain things. I'm like I don't know why it took me that long to find and like not be scared to try and use Jeff Lear's verb notes and mm -hmm. things like that. And 
um, I think it would be cool and helpful at some point to have like kind of like a toolkit or just like some sort of guideline to like here's what you should have here's what's going to be helpful when you're looking for certain types of things yeah because with the translation work it's like there's a lot of searching yeah yeah there's and through the the lists of nouns and then these verbs and other things mm -hmm. and there are there are sometimes um as we go through and it takes us it used to take us a really long time to get students even into the yellow, what we call the yellow dictionary, the nation story dictionary. Mm -hmm. And so now we're trying to push students there, but then also now to push them into Jeff Lear's work, both his, his verbs, uh, notebook, notebooks, and also his stem list, and then the nouns. And so trying to sort of figure that, because that translation work, it does keep pushing you deeper and deeper into the resources because you're going to encounter a bunch of stuff that is not in the sort of building block approach to Tlingit, which is here's this, here's this, here's that, here's what this is, here's what that is. But then all of a sudden you're going to jump into this whole language and you're going to get these huge strings of things that are, and that's the really challenging part. It's, it's a big leap, I think, from beginning to intermediate and then intermediate to advanced and then advanced to this. There's like huge leaps that are going on. So yeah, in the future, I think we'll try and do a better job of getting folks in there and saying, here it is, just start looking, you know, uh, because as you go through and you look at something like this, like basically I'd say, go to Carrie's website first. Uh, and if you're not finding it there, go to the verb dictionary. Although I usually go to the verb dictionary first, but uh, and then if you're not finding it there, go into Jeff Lear's work. Right. And I think it's been it's been really valuable to like watch your process of translating and see what what resources you use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At any time in my life, those three things are always open on my computer. They just always are. And then. Uh, if you're using, uh, say, Firefox or something, I think Firefox and Google will do it. Uh, but if you go to this verbs website here, uh, actually, I think if you go back one. So here's uh, ankn.uaf.edu slash tilde clinket verbs, right? And uh, I think if you just hit clink it, not the clink it verbs 16, but if you just hit clink it verbs, it should be the first thing that comes up. I don't know if this go built one is still working. Let me try it. But as you click on here, and this clink it index is the thing that we work off of the most, because you go find the verb root and you look it up from there. So if you right click on this from this specific page, and you you select, oh, what am I looking for here? I don't think it's save link as. Mm, let's try it. Maybe it was a different browser. Yeah, this is it. So you, you push the save link as, and you pick a spot on your computer where you're going to be able to find it. Uh, like if I just save this on my desktop. It's fine. Although my desktop is messy. Uh, and then you're going to save this as an XML document. Okay, I don't know if I walked you guys through this yet or not. Uh, and just leave it, clink it, verbs, roots, that's fine. And you save it. Now, if you're in the same browser and you select, and you select open file. You can go to where you save this, and when you open it, this is now opened from your computer. So you don't need internet access to have all of this information with you. All of these links will work. You can expand them and, and close, open and close them as much as you want. It's searchable. Uh, it's something that even if you're on a plane or wherever you were, it's on your computer now. So that's a good step to have so that you have saved all this information 
uh, and you can you can look through it that way. That's that too. Yes. Uh, let's see. Paint away. Cut cut society. I remember. Oh. Um, so yeah, these shorts, these stories are pretty short. And uh, you know, so here's this one. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen sentences. All right, so I guess some of these are a little longer. But, and so, like, Months ago, Kutliek showed us this fire, fire story, and uh, and just thought it would be neat to have. And this really uh, gives us some additional resources. I, I feel like there's all this stuff that's been worked on, and I don't know if anybody's working with this stuff. Like, I don't really see this stuff being circulated. So by retyping it and having a translation that opens the door for future projects, right? But, you know, you got, how many days? Seven, eight, nine, ten, about 11 days. So just factor in how much you think you can get done in 11 days. Telling a story, doing your translations, and then translating one of these to English. But if, uh, I don't know, if Friday comes and you said I couldn't get to that, to this one, I'm fine with that, All right? Because I kind of forgot to keep reminding you guys. So how about we have that? It'd be nice if you did that. But maybe it's just kind of a, a bonus type of thing. But really, it's, this is, it's good to sort of to do this stuff because it, it gives you the translation work without having to do like all the transcription work. So if Next Friday comes, you said, well, I can only do three minutes of the Elon translation, and I can only do like 10 sentences from here. I'm totally fine with that. Just do what you can and um, try, not to, try not to stress out. Okay, what do you guys want to do now? We got Yeshkanata. We've got Yesh Dislu Ach Yetis Yetis Yiki. Oh, my grandson Kunach do to Wasi Gueshkasnik. Just um, Wasa do a sock, uh, Austin Hammond, just Huakwe. Our Akawanik, West Shkasnik. Okay. Um, who, um, took Adusatu Akawanik, West Shkasnik. And a Katsik. Okay. So let's. Um, did Catherine Mills also? Uh, this one, like, okay. It was, it was, so like, uh, I think they were at, they're at a museum in Portland. And I think they were looking at a hat or a, maybe a shakiat that had that, that was about this story. And he tells the story and then she gives us live translation. 
So at the very beginning, you'll hear David Ketzig talking to his mom a little bit, and then they'll then they'll start. And the fun part about this is how much it's like even though you've guys got a lot of work to do, like come back to something like this where you listen to how much they're laughing and how much fun it is, and to say you know. You guys are on this inside circle, and, and I'm asking you guys to do some things that only a handful of people in the entire world can do. So it's okay if you're a little worried about it, but I would say, don't worry. Just see what you can. Everyone will be fine. All the buildings will still be standing. The clinket will still be here. You'll be... Uh, I don't want you to have any, like heartache or belly aches or any kind of like trauma associated with this. I don't want you to feel like in any way that you're going to let anybody down. Uh, all the work that you've done so far is fabulous. All the work you're going to do is amazing. And we're just lucky to have chances to really take deep dives into this material and to also say, oh yeah, I can listen to that and understand it. I can, I can get this story at a deeper level now. Um, yeah, so she tells it, uh, and then Nora did the translation work, but then what I realized was like the way that it's, and this is such a fun thing, because I think this story is really important because it shows us that there's not just one way. Because as you look at the line-by-line -line translation, you'll see it doesn't match with the way that Anna translates it, which is just fine, because she also knows this story. So as she tells it, she's kind of got a little bit of her own version, which is incredible because if, you're, if you understand Clinkit, then you could sit there and listen to it and listen to both versions and enjoy them and then look at the line-by-line -line translation and enjoy that as well. So uh, it helps us move beyond these concepts of uh, right and wrong and into sort of uh, this territory, which is why I like... I was teaching in Teslin, and I kept saying translate, and Kei Shi Besi Kuli kept suggesting interpret. And I think interpret is better than translation, um, because that's what we're doing. We're, we would hear something and say, oh yeah, that's how, I would, that's how I would interpret that. Because sometimes when you translate it, it sounds like there's this court case, and someone's speaking this language, and you need to tell the court what that is. And it's like, no, that's not it at all. You're offering your interpretation. And then we can move away from this right and wrong discussion and have a conversation. Because conversations are better than, they're more enjoyable than right or wrong type of stuff. Okay, let me pull up the audio for this. I gotta reshare my screen with the audio. Hold on. Also, I'd like to learn how to do that too. Oh, the the screen share with the audio. Uh, how to get audio on a screen share? Uh, how to play in a recording and have the students online hear it? Yeah, well, it's taking me. Four years, I think, to figure it out. I, I knew that. So sometime. Well, yeah. step one is you use Zoom. Uh, step two is when you're using Zoom, uh, let me try and share the screen and see if I can, well, I guess I can, maybe. Uh, when you're using Zoom, if you enter the Zoom preferences, under audio, uh, there's these two options. One is enable stereo, and the other one is allow option for using original sound from microphone. And those, those are pretty important. Uh, and then when those two things are checked, and when you first sign on to your Zoom meeting, 
you should see an option on the top left of your Zoom window that says turn on original sound. Because Zoom compresses the sound and if you're speaking Klingit, you don't want compressed sound. So then you uncheck that. Then the second step is when you're sharing your screen, and I can't show you guys this one, but when you first enter the share screen thing, if you're the meeting host, there'll be a checkbox on the bottom left of that window that pops up that says share computer sound. And you have to have that checked. And then whatever you play goes directly into uh, the system that you're using. And we've had a lot of success with a certain type of microphone setup as well. That was pretty expensive, but um, if you have an organization or you want to do some grant writing or something, uh, it's about $3,000 for this set of microphones. But it works really well because there it's a speaker and a microphone, both in one. OK. Goodness, cheesh. And get you an A. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's a that's a that's hint talk at the that ask. Ravens does not swim in the water. Chawne yata. And still, we have the raven knows that we have a story behind it. Oh, how are you? He heard about it. He heard about where a place where they threw fat at each, to each other at each other. <coughs> the raven really liked fat. But still, he never gained weight. He's always <laughs> he was always hungry. <laughs> he saw the people jigging for halibut. Yeah, he. Then it's, um, and then he, he looked at the water and it was just as if he lifted up like a blanket to look under. <coughs> so he went, he walked underneath the water. He's talking about the uh, the old timer halibut hook. He used to tie it on, and he was looking, examining the halibut hooks while he was down there. Uh -huh. That's a look. Not a And the person who was holding it above that was fishing that didn't even feel the jigging on the on the line when he untied it. Okay. When they pull up the line, there would be any there wouldn't be anything on there. Then they would put another bait on. That's what he said. They used to tie it on, tie the bait on, and then they would throw the um the halibut took over. He would do the same to it, the help it took. I mean, the bait. he would untie the baits out. He did that so many times. And the man that was fishing was wondering what's going on, how who takes the bait off our hook. Yeah, so they went for an expert who could feel a very slight tug on a line. They went ashore to find the person who was an expert at feeling things when it's, there's a little jerk on a line. 
And the raven went underneath again. He went under the water. He thought he was just so clever, so he was taking it off as as smoothly as he can do it and tie the bait. He had, he said when he was taking the bait off, he had his head, his nose too close to it, too close to the hook. That, that expert felt there's something going on on this line, you know, he felt a little um, wiggling. And then he pulled, but you have to pull the line. And he said that the, the halibut hook got right on his nose, on Raven's nose. And they were bringing him up. And he could see under the bottom of the boat, just like you see the ceiling. As soon as he came closer, he kicked up underneath, underneath the boat, and the oh, man was pulling it. Oh, this <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever Uncle Raven is, he says, forgive me for telling this story. <laughs> he, was, he was kicking underneath, holding him, bracing himself under there so they won't pull him in. <laughs> Here was, here was the raven nose on the hook. <laughs> they pulled his nose off. <laughs> they didn't know what, what it was. The fishermen did not know exactly what it was. Oh, you know, do, you know, school call, when they went, the, the fishermen went ashore. The cutters didn't get your dog. We see it. came down and they were examining this thing they, they brought up. They showed what we used to call all the shiloko to the other one. Poor Raven came ashore, came out from un, in the water without a nose. Oh, shoot, no, call a yuck. And he found a uh, bark and he, he shaped it. I call a tuck to show. He stuck it to where his beard usually goes. Good, 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 good. He said that he had on a hat with a bill on. He they wearing, good, they so. didn't know where he got this hat. It had a bill, and he started to walk. <laughs> he went from one house that began not coming to the village. He went one, house, one house at a time, and then he asked. <laughs> I wonder, who, I wonder who got uh, Ponate's nose. He gave it a name. He wasn't saying it's my nose, you know. I wonder who, who pulled it up. He said. <laughs> we heard it was next door, so he went to the next door house. Then he would go to the next door and he said, is this where they, they caught the, uh, someone brought up the uh, Panate's nose? <laughs> said, no, not here. Try next door. He was walking through the houses. Finally, he came to the house where, the, where his nose was and he was asking. Are you the people who, who brought up the Ponate's nose? Oh, uh, yeah, do. They said, do. Yes, this is, we did. It's right there. Yeah, oh, do. Oh. They put uh, down down the downy part of a bird feathers around it. Uh, and he was looking at it. He, was looking at it. he said, My, this, this looks. <laughs> <laughs> he said, isn't this something? It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> he was looking at it. While people looked, had to blink their eye. He pulled the other one off. And then he put his nose back. 
That's why when you see a raven, it doesn't look like it, it really fits onto his nose. <laughs> That's the way the story went as it was told to him. <laughs> How long was it? Ten minutes? Yep, that was exactly uh, yes. seven minutes. Yes. That's just one of yes. the cute little things he did. <laughs> we all knew it when he brought it out, you yeah. know, with that. It's a neat story. Yeah. People think it's just a raven beast, you know, but there's a story behind it. <laughs> Wait, uh, is Sunny true? That's your uncle. Where did he go? It is such a shit, just a song. What you think is so? Catherine Mills just uh, mentioned that there is a song that goes with this raven nose. Catherine Mills, I think they know they know the song. Amy is an old timer, Dakani for the ravens, and she knows different songs, and she is very good in singing. She's one of our best, including Lydia is one of the best on the raven side. So here they are. They're going to sing about the raven nose. <laughs> my great uncle and uh, his English name was Charlie Charles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was Catherine Mills, a Kayeti, Goshitso, Amy Marvin, Hechasaku Dakaimi, so we call Yeo a Katheze Wok Akutsu, Hasawe, our she, we, we she a ya, Yeskashniki dart. One Kalins a ya, we do we yell Shkashniki, it haya has our she, we, we at she. One Kalins too. Kau tu shahid, we yuk atangi we atshi tin. Yeta ko atlek din a yeho ach, at we tel kar shahid. Yak egg and cheese. Dasak shay to a sukukoa, a dat a yuk a gartilla arti, we 
wish kashnik yat atu wan qanin so yesh kashniki chaye ko kinki chishu ko khsati a atu yeti yat a qadqa yesh khakanat a wan qanin sti waqqa huwa shi chishu ga a we an shu wi hiti aya qane we shu ko aya akawa a tlek tlek ni a hiti aya kana a ni a hiti kana a ko keda keda hiti aya kana a aqa awe awat awat e to walk takhuna shishu at ko a ko ya ta ye to slow away Ausatin ha asha kut kut wune ka kunach shuko at aya like he was astonished his cow the cake sha at like kinach it's not bad yeah wait kaka to slow ayako at we kunach away at has wushuk yat at a yak eh other thing Talk away alien, yes, ya walk car. Shuko at Hesako, one knocks away. Car could need Gosh Yata Aya Aya. Ha, could need Aya was a teen. Gosh played her in a monster alien. Ye away could need one conins a dart Aya. Ah, we sing it Aya took Cotton. Chakut at aya at skani. Just yet a koa ye away uasa ye de walk to which a good kashniki. Ye see tine ke konate walki. Kaka do a ye koa ye away a dish cloudly ye see ye koa ye. Das at so you, hon? Yes, kashnik da. Sure, get EG Wu way good night to way Portland Art Museum. Duck plank, plank was a teen. Got a cocker quashiko. Hechwasako. Quatla kakona she. Yank. Hechwasako. That's a good question. I do I do sa a kawanik we wasagh to sa we museum singit khinakh kasiye at dakhi hiti was kho akh khatkhat se wo akh ko sa kho ha khayat at so da it khutan Yisiku yata a cut cut say wuk ak tesh a cut sa wuk ak ka yisitinge. 
with classifier zero, el koa has to tu ni go a cut has so to the cock. Yeah, you got a cut cut see the cock. You made me forget it. Um, so this is kind of fun because forgetting can also have a, a cause to it. So uh, you would put a subject there and then you would uh, change it to an L classifier. And now you're having someone make you forget. Oh, you made me forget it. Or this made me forget it. Uh, which could be a good thing. Like in this, we made them forget their sorrow. Hastutuwu nigu. Uh, so just as we look at some of these sentences, uh, and this isn't a big deal thing, it's just a standardized thing, like that would be short, uh, that one would be short, that one would be short, and that one would be short. And that's, that's how we write them. With these ones, like d and do, there's a, there's a difference between that, to wu and to wu. Yes, but that one could probably go either way. Uh, niku and niku, same thing. Um, but then, so that's forgetting. So you can also make somebody forget. And then we, when we look at remembering, there's a similar thing that goes on. One is the structure is kind of very similar. So to keep in mind, uh, so this would be a cut uh, sayati, and this one should be an object of, as well, like a cut cut sayati. Let's see if that one's there. Uh, that's a good one, uh, but sometimes I have to give everything back though. Uh, let's see. I can't remember who told me that. I used to think at u dakihiti, but then that doesn't work because it's not all at u. Uh, let's see. Where must remember? Can it take? I don't know this one. I think that should be an object too. So, a cut cut sayati. I think. Oh, I know how to check. Hold on. Let's see. There. State. Yeah, so that should be. So, when you look stuff up in this dictionary, if it says st, that's state. And that means it has an object and not a subject. And then I am means it's impersonal. There's neither a subject or an object. TR, transitive, there is both an object and a subject. And then IN is intransitive. There is a subject but no object. So that's important as you look stuff up, because sometimes it'll show you some things like, oh, well, how will I change that? So then you look it up in the root section. So again, TR, there is an object and a subject. You can't take them out. ST, there is only an object. IN, there is only a subject. IM, there's neither. So now we'll go back to remember. And we'll see. Uh, so this one should a cut and so that's like I I kept it in mind. I didn't forget it. This one, um, 
I guess now that is to sort of push yourself to remember. That's it. And then uh, kind of I recalled it. Aka dak has se waha. So that one is um, also an object, right? But it has the dock part, which is a little bit different. So like on it, it sort of came out, it emerged to me. Then there was one, I thought, oh, here it is, to remind. So then we get the, it's similar to this one, Aka dak sayaha, and then we have aka dak sashaha. So same thing. The object would be the one who's remembering, the subject would be the one who's reminding, right? So you see here aka dak chet sashaha, but you could say aka dak chet si shaha. You reminded me, right? So anyways. Just fun stuff. You okay. I was t hoping to confirm that the negative would be a cut, clash cut, cut, set, Is that it? I what? didn't remember it. Oh. Clash cut, cut. I don't know. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Well, so here the example they have is kesh i ka da khat sa wu ha. But then, like, I didn't keep it in mind. So that should be kesh a khat khat se wa ti, I think. And that one should be. Hmm. I think that one would go short and high. Just like this one, short and high. Sort of like um Kesh Ayak Uti. Short and high. So that would be Sawuti? Yeah, should be. Or wait. Yeah, Sawuti. Because it should be a zero classifier, sa, wu, te. I was. I wanted to use it for if somebody asked, "Did you bring the bread?" Hmm. Do klesha kat kat sa wu te. Yeah, I didn't, and so I. I think the difference would be like, I didn't keep it in mind. Okay. As opposed to I forgot it. But that would be, when we get into those finer points, it's always good to run that by speakers. Because th there could be ones where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure that you could say that. I'm sure that you could, because we see it right here. I didn't remember you. Um, I didn't keep you in mind. And then it, it would be interesting to sort of say, uh, to, and this is what kind of, linguists would do is they'd come up with some a little story and maybe they would have someone say it kind of differently each time or sometimes you'll just go and work with an elder and say what would kind of the differences be between saying uh, and because those, those are probably saying three slightly different things. And that's really fun stuff, because then you get to some of these finer points of meaning and that the context could sort of come into my, come into play as well. Okay. So uh, we also have yech and then, uh, but any questions or thoughts you guys might have, maybe we'll do this one on Wednesday. Uh, maybe we'll just listen to it. Uh, I also want to make sure that we're setting aside time 
to answer any questions you might have, but you can certainly email me your, your work and say, you know, could you look at these parts? And I'm happy to do that. Was there anything you guys want to make sure we get in these last five minutes today? Things you're thinking of? I have another question. Uh, I was wondering, um, Rosita World did a speech, an English speech at the Herring, at the Yalku Eek, at the Envy Hall a bit ago. Mm -hmm. And it was about <clears throat> how the different clans traded from the Kiksudi for herring eggs. And it was a stirring English speech, and I thought it would be a good speech if someone put it into clinket. Oh, wow. And it was a repetitive refrain, or whatever you call it, of um, Duck Lady from so-and-so came to trade. And then she'd do it again from uh, Juno, from Cake. And I thought, man, that would sound good in Clinket. Could I possibly do that as a project for um, one of these picks, either the uh, short story or a translation? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you use that in place of the short story? OK. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then, uh, yeah, just anybody know how to say trade? Is it whoosh de seken? Yeah, so whoosh de seken is trade. Uh, you could also say whoosh de seken. And, and so like, um, it's a kind of interesting one. I'm not, I haven't taken a close look at it as far as how it kind of works. But whoosh de seken is a big part of it, right? And then if you say whoosh de seken, that could be just sort of trade, just in general, trade. But you could also say whoosh to say, and then you could use a handling verb after that, um, uh, depending on what you're sort of using. Or you could use yeosane as sort of just the just whatever. Um, but whoosh to say, and, and it's interesting how the, it could be in, I don't know if it's in or un. It's a, it sounds more like, what are you guys hearing when you hear that? Un. But that's how, you know. Um, I hear it, that would be kun. Kun? No, so, I hear it, whoosh to say kun, with an A. An A? Whoosh to say kun. Huh, okay. Well, that's what Irene Paul said. Okay. That's how you two would to cut you on. Actually, she said it with a high tone, if I remember correctly. At the end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was one, like, trading is such a big thing for Tlingit people. I was actually kind of surprised at how long went by before I learned how to say that. See, I don't think he has it in his stuff. I wonder where he might have it. I do think it's in the Raven book, though. Oops. Oh, I was looking.
and everything too hard. Well, I'll find it in a sec whenever this thing gets done thinking. There it is. Uh, Kumi? Ah. In um, uh, Jeff Lear's nouns, I, I just looked. Um, so they have, uh, they have the sake in as trade, ik das as uh, trade goods and you the sake in like when you trade work with someone? Oh yeah. There might be more. I just went through a few of them that were there. Okay. You guys didn't spell it right. Is it this like this list? Oh yeah, there it is. Sheesh. Yeah, so de sake out of grasp, de sechen. Uh, taking his or her place, trading places, taking turns. Uh, but then when you put the whoosh in front of it too, it, it just refers to trade. Uh, let's see. And here it is. Uh, why not trade for your octopus tentacle? So this is and then so that's turning it into this um, why not do that um, but then you see like it's it doesn't seem to act like a, a verb right it's not really doing any sort of conjugation as far as I could tell uh, oh here I probably got to change that to the high tone I'm going to trade this arrow of yours. This one is Again, Do you want to? See uh, a is uh, want to. And then the aqua is in there. Yes, a yautzani. They made a trade. Yep. So those are the examples in the Raven book. Okay. Uh, yeah, the noun database. So let me take this one and I will put, I'll just put this up on our website, on our webpage tonight. So I'll put up the version that's in numbers for those of you who have a Mac and I'll put a version up in Excel for those of you who are working on Windows uh, so that you can just have this in your toolbox. It's a very uh, valuable document. It's got lots of uh, repetition. So this is the thing. So like the reason to save is in here three times is because it can mean grasp, out, reach. So this is how you would have it in a dictionary. So if you looked in English, it would come up under those three things. So that's why you have it um, multiple entries. Some of the entries are sort of in his short way of kind of writing it. So you'll see some downward marks and stuff. Um, but usually you can find it written out in other ways. So gradually this will all be incorporated into a new dictionary, uh, but that's uh, one of those lifetime projects. Okay, uh, any last minute things? Hopefully we're feeling okay. The two, um, the two, right, like, uh, kind of, Oh, listen. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this was written, uh, I think, in the Lear orthography, and so I did these global find and replaces. 
So if you see an underline G in the English, that's a GH. I haven't fixed them all. But uh, yeah, so you're going to see Nirit for night. You're going to see Thogit uh, for thought. Um, but just deal with it. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Yeah, so there's lots of stuff in here. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys about this one, but I was reading the Emmons book on chill cat blankets and basketry, and uh, there's some new words in there that I thought were really neat, like katooch is the color black, kadleit is the color white. So that was a really cool pattern, but we can talk about that more maybe on Wednesday. So yiku ayachwan. I think so. Uh, I'll take a I'll take a look at it again, and um, I don't know if you can do that with every color. Like I don't know, could you go kakana takahini? Is that getting too long for the thing? Uh, but I know you could do it with the major ones. Kachat, kachesh, kasu, or kasu. Katat and uh, katuch, katlate. Um, can you can add an L classifier? Can you um, change them into a verb? Like you blacken something? Uh, the way that that works is when you have ch for a hair, and the L classifier, and then the color. So that's why you'd say chashtate, nakats eh, a white fox. Ooch. But maybe, maybe, they might just say and that's usually to color something or to dye it. And then you would say something uh, as far as I can tell. But I'll take a look. I haven't read the whole thing. It's a fabulous book. I didn't even know it existed until uh, Dolores Churchill told me about it a couple weeks ago. Also, when we were looking at the scanned like um, folders with some of Emmons work. No, that one's De Laguna. Mm -hmm. But this is another one we should scan because it's a couple. It's 150 bucks everywhere I've seen it. And then they have, they were using that orthography with the R. Yes, yeah, so it would be good to uh, this one. Nora went through and she updated all the clinket that's in there. But there's a number of things where she's like, double question mark. <laughs> Because, who knows? Yeah, I was reading the uh, Daily Gun introduction to um, George Emmons, um, the Clinket Indians, and she's like, a lot of his orthography is like inconsistent and doesn't make sense. And right. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's been known he's been inconsistent for a while. Yeah, people had to figure out how to write these sixty-four sounds. And sometimes yeah. some of them were better than others. I heard he could speak Tlingit. Like, I'm really curious about that now. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep it casual on Wednesday. Try and get through maybe one last story, and then I'll just talk about your guys' work. We can also talk Monday when you guys will all tell a story, and then we'll see where we're at time-wise, because next Monday we'll also have some time to uh, go over some stuff as well. Cheese. Ah, you can't. Cheese, huh? Cheese. Who's she got to steam?